This week, to be closer to China, what is China's targeted poverty alleviation? How is it possible to bring millions of poor people out of poverty? What are the five methods of poverty alleviation? Why does China apply the six precision measures? This week, be closer to China. President Xi Jinping has made it radiantly clear that the elimination of all extreme poverty in China is essential for ushering in the moderately prosperous society in 2020, which is the first of China's overarching national goals, and he has tasked officials with making sure that this goal is realized. It was in November 2013 in a poor county in central China's Hunan province that President Xi first proposed the concept of targeted or precision poverty alleviation. He said, targeted measures should be based on practical situations and empty slogans should be avoided. Targeted means more individualized procedures and programs with the policies to support them, including standardized definitions of poverty, identification criteria of poor people, and customized plans and programs to bring them out of poverty. But how specifically do targeted policies and precision measures work in practice in the tens of thousands of impoverished villages? How is it possible for a poverty alleviation campaign to provide customized programs for millions of poor people, many living in remote areas? Finding out brings us closer to China. This bumpy road leads to a mountain village, and this stone abode is home to 16-year-old Xu Hui Qing, the daughter of a poor rural farming family. There are only two rooms. One serves as the kitchen. This tiny room also serves as her study. I don't do homework under the lamp because the light from it is weak. I am used to doing my homework with the help of flashlight. Xu Wei Qing has just been admitted to the Vocational Education Center in the county. Her family resides in the hinterland of the Wuling Mountains in Chongqing. Xu Wei Qing's father, Xu Zhou Shan, is ill and physically disabled. Her mother suffers from childhood meningitis. Without sufficient workers, the three-member family lives by farming a few acres of mountainous land. In 2015, Xu's family became entitled to a basic living allowance of 400 yuan per month, roughly $61, which was very much needed. Although China has lifted more than 700 million people out of poverty, there are still 30 million people living in extreme poverty, like Xu Wei Qing's family. And lifting them out of poverty is China's must-do task by 2020. It was in 2013 that Xi Jinping proposed the concept of targeted poverty alleviation. During an inspection trip to Guizhou province in 2015, he proposed six kinds of precision. Precision in identifying the real poor. Precision in tailoring aid projects to help the poor according to their needs. Precision in guaranteeing financial support for aid projects. Precision in guaranteeing the implementation of aid projects for every impoverished household. Precision in designating officials to help carry out poverty alleviation measures in every poor village. And precision in evaluating whether poverty alleviation goals are met within defined standards. The six precisions enable targeted poverty alleviation. I've heard that there are so-called six kinds of precision poverty alleviation measures or concepts. Uh, what are some of them and uh, how are they applied? The six kinds of precision poverty alleviation lay the groundwork for General Secretary Xi Jinping's targeted poverty alleviation. 
The six precisions refer to the need to achieve precision in identifying the recipients, in making project arrangements, utilizing funds, implementing household-specific measures, official assignments, and fulfilling the goals. I will use one village as an example of how we apply those six precisions. Say, if there are 100 households in the village, we will first identify the really poor among the 100. To achieve this goal, we will go through the procedures of democratic appraisal and then get confirmation from township and county. Say, we identify 50 of them as poor households. After identification, we need to provide the 50 households with the precise support they need. In the past, we might have just simply offered all the 50 households with sheep for them to raise, but that support was not precise enough because these 50 households may suffer poverty for various reasons. Some may lack funding, some may lack education, and some may lack a healthy labor force. Therefore, we cannot adopt a one-size-fits-all measure to the 50 households by providing them with sheep. So how can we attain that precision in terms of support? First, we need to identify the specific reasons that cause the impoverishment of those 50 households and then tailor aid projects accordingly. The village usually is not strong enough in self-development and self-organization. So we will assign cadres and a task group from outside the village over there to assist the village development. After precise support, we have a standard to evaluate whether we have achieved the goal of poverty alleviation, that is the precision being put into effect. To achieve that, we need a whole set of integral systems that center on how to precisely utilize the resources, manage the programs, publicize the information, and evaluate the results. The ultimate goal is to guarantee the most efficient support for the most impoverished people so that they can get rid of poverty so that our goal of eradicating poverty can be attained. How precise can you be in defining people either just above the line or just below the line? So how do we identify the poor? We make a judgment by four criteria. First, we examine the house. If we find out that the safety condition of the house cannot be guaranteed during the examination, then the family meets the first criterion. Second, we learn about their household income and living conditions by examining the food they eat. Third, if the family members are all poorly educated, normally they are often faced with poverty problems. So the third criterion Four, if the family has a sufficient labor force, its level of poverty tends to be lower. Poverty issues are very complicated. We all know the first step is to target the poor accurately. But how can we identify the poor among our huge population, and through what measures can we find them? Actually, China as well as the international community have always been discussing possible solutions. However, it remains a hard nut to crack. After General Secretary Xi Jinping put forward the idea of targeted poverty alleviation, the priority was to identify the poor and the identification is wrapped up in what standards you use and how you apply those standards. This is a very realistic and practical issue. In reality, we mainly adopt a multi-dimensional, multi-pronged way to identify the poor and show more respect to the will of the poor. And that serves as the foundation for targeted poverty alleviation. In the past, we only adopted a single standard of income level to identify the poor, but that is not enough. In addition to basic income, we should also take into consideration other fields such as education, health care, safety of housing, etc. In this way, we have a guarantee of identifying really poor people more precisely. Shangxi Autonomous Prefecture in Hunan Province is rich in natural beauty, but behind these scenic mountains lies villagers that have been long plagued by poverty. The village people remain impoverished and development has been difficult, but the situation is now changing. 
This is beekeeper Law Gong. He once chopped wood for a living and was mired in poverty. But thanks to the targeted poverty alleviation program, his fascination with bees has been turned into his livelihood. The program helped him buy hives and the equipment necessary to become a beekeeper. And now his business is a success. <laughs> It has increased my income. 2014, less than 10,000 yuan. 2016, 30,000 yuan. And 2017, 60,000 yuan. Local Development Director Li Wei Da explains that the policy is now aimed at those who need the most help. The essence of targeted poverty alleviation is, first of all, embodied in precise targets. Back in the old days, we helped almost every business person, regardless of whether or not they were poor. But now we are helping impoverished families who really need help. Targeted poverty alleviation means that local officials will examine different conditions of each poor family and then design customized plans to help each accordingly. The policy is working. In the past four years, among 1,200 poor rural villages in the Shangxi region, 364 villages have been lifted out of poverty. That's 500,000 people. In 2015, Xi Jinping proposed five methods of poverty alleviation industry, develop poor people's own productivity, relocation, help poor people migrate to better places, eco-compensation payments to preserve ecology, education and training, and social security payments to those who cannot work. The overall vision is simple. First, the reasons that cause impoverishment are identified, then a series of targeted measures are tailored for each poor family to bring them out of poverty. For Lo Gong, his honey harvest has doubled every year. Such a golden bounty enables him to send his daughter to university and to buy a motorcycle. The future for his family has brightened. He will now train his village neighbors on the art of beekeeping. What are the so-called five methods of bringing people out of poverty, the different categories, mm -hmm. and, and what kind of uh, color can you add to explaining the, the nuances of each one? The five methods of poverty alleviation are put forward as a package plan to deal with poverty based on its different causes. We first decide on some basic standards concerning what sorts of people need help and help them through various measures. For instance, for poverty alleviation through industrial development, the recipients need to have a healthy labor force. Otherwise, such industrial programs won't help. Another example, for poverty alleviation through relocation, the areas must be places with poor conditions and fragile ecosystems. Thus, villagers living there have no other development opportunities unless they get relocated somewhere else. Still more, there are social security programs which guarantee basic living standards for the poor who are unable to work. For instance, the elderly, the disabled, those who are seriously ill, we cannot help them through any production measures. Therefore, we need to provide subsistence allowances or other social security programs for them to make sure their income can reach above the poverty line. That is what poverty alleviation through social security means. In fact, poverty alleviation through industrial development is very complicated. It's not a matter for central government. Rather, the key lies in how the counties arrange the development plan according to what industry actually suits their conditions. The villagers and villagers decide on what they can do and what is profitable. Moreover, we must avoid herd effects. In other words, people should not all swarm to develop the same businesses, which would cause homogenous development. For example, if one household raises sheep, and then all the other rural households follow suit, this one-size-fits-all development plan would not help. We need to respect economic laws and market rules. We should allow the farmers themselves to choose which industry to develop. The responsibility of the government is to provide services and market building. For instance, we issue loans and offer training, but also let the government take the lead in developing the Internet and organizing e-commerce in poor areas.
For example, public transportation in Longnan City, Gansu province, is underdeveloped. Now, with the development of e-commerce, the poor have witnessed an annual income increase of 420 RMB for the first year, around 400 to 500 RMB for the second year, and another 500 to 600 RMB this year. By the development of e-commerce alone, the poor have increased their income by more than 1,000 RMB over the past three years. In the past, despite the good quality of agricultural produce, product selling is a big headache. But now, with the help of e-commerce, the farmers have made remarkable progress in sales. So in order to develop certain industries, the local grassroots must take the major responsibility of implementation, while the government should mainly offer some services according to the laws of a market economy. We have some large-scale poverty alleviation programs that are designed at the national level. Some people live in places where the local conditions are not favorable for development. What can we do? Doing poverty alleviation on the spot can be quite expensive. Road building and drinking water provision alone would cost hundreds of millions of RMB. When the aid is stopped, they'll fall back into poverty again. Therefore, we have to get the poor households relocated to achieve a sustainable alleviation effect. In addition, the farmers might cultivate places that suffer from potential geological hazards, so we must move them in case of ecological disasters. We're doing pretty well with relocation projects. In 2016, we relocated 2.4 million people. In 2017, 3.4 million, which together adds up to 5.8 million. And we plan to relocate another 2.8 million in 2018. Then the relocation numbers will be more than 8 million. We will basically have fulfilled the task of relocation in 2019. We will make use of our institutional advantages and make progress on all fronts. Just getting them relocated to new places is not enough. We need to take care of the poor in terms of education, healthcare, industrial development and so on. Our goal is not merely to get them out of poverty, but also offer them sustainable development which enables them to live a good life forever after being lifted out of poverty. One of the critical uh, methods of uh, helping the uh, abject poor are the remote villages that have to be relocated. I visited a few. And in some cases, the villages themselves, even though they are poor technically, don't want to move to the city because their whole lives are in the country. That's what they know. That's what they're comfortable. And they feel totally out of place in the city. How do you deal with those kinds of conflicts? We cannot be hasty with this issue. We have policies, funding, criteria for relocation. If you meet the requirements and are willing to get relocated, go ahead. If not, you can just hold on and wait. We have a project in Tibet. There is a village located at a high altitude of more than 4,000 meters above sea level, and we have a relocation project for them. At the beginning, we successfully relocated more than 100 households to a new village. We built houses for them with government subsidies, so the villagers themselves did not have to pay for them as they don't have money. We also set up three companies, one for raising dairy cows, one for raising chickens, and one for producing feed and there's a patch of land allocated for growing the feed. All these three companies are modern shareholding companies. Every individual holds some shares, and they can work in the company as well. In addition, we arrange for leapfrog development in medical care. There's a province in East China that partners with the village and offers remote medical assistance via a local clinic in the village that gets connected to the Internet, so they can receive distance medical treatment. As the poor can see these improved conditions in the new place, they become willing to relocate. So far, among the remaining 40 households that need relocation, there are only four households that still need more persuasion. All the others have agreed to move now. So we don't only resolve the problem of housing after relocation, rather, all the industrial development, infrastructure and public facilities will be taken care of. Yet this transition takes time, and we can wait instead of making it mandatory and forcing people to move.
In actual practice, some grassroots cadres may have the inclination to force people into relocation in order to fulfill their goals. However, this is just an individual phenomenon and we will correct the wrong whenever we notice such malpractices. And they're not serious. So far, we have altogether relocated more than five million people and accomplished more than half our goal. Another two years and we will basically fulfill the target. I think the fact that no major incident has ever occurred during the process is the best evidence for the quality of our work. As for the minor issues, we will address them as we proceed with the work. Generally speaking, we are doing quite well with relocation. Poverty alleviation is a daunting challenge. Throughout history, throughout the world, every country strives to alleviate poverty. Now, China vows to alleviate poverty by 2020. Within three years, China must lift the final 40 million people above the poverty line. What's unique about China's plan that is called targeted poverty alleviation? How does targeted work? What are its problems, its secrets? Can other countries learn from China's experience? I'm investigating China's targeted poverty alleviation. I'm Robert Lawrence June, bringing you closer to China. The leadership of the CPC guarantees the targeted poverty alleviation program. The CPC Central Committee has made it official, requiring that heads of local CPC departments and governments sign letters of responsibility and make promises. It also requires that heads of CPC departments at provincial, city, county, township, and village levels have clear and demarcated responsibilities and coordinate their work. Party cadres at all levels must immerse themselves in the task of eliminating poverty and do so with a good spirit. They should mobilize the poor's wish to work for a better life. China has been moving uh, toward an institutionalization of uh, various aspects of society uh, uh, away from uh, just single human being intervention. So how does the institutionalization of uh, China's policies affect the poverty alleviation program, both currently and, and plans for the future? I think China's political and institutional advantages in poverty alleviation are mainly reflected in the following aspects. First, it helps build up a top-down organizing system and task force in poverty alleviation from the central level to the village level in a short period of time. That is to say, it enables effective implementation of our poverty alleviation policies and plans. For instance, in China's roughly 128,000 poor villages, more than a million cadres are expected there to help. With this rapid establishment of an effective task force that has the organizing ability to ensure the implementation of our poverty the alleviation plans, poor people can really benefit. Secondly, in terms of mobilizing resources and investment for poverty alleviation, thanks to China's current governance system, the central government can make decisions rapidly to increase investment in poverty alleviation. Such an increase in a fiscal budget is quite difficult to achieve in many countries. However, for China, it is easily achieved through NPC discussions. China's governance system can motivate and coordinate various government departments to offer favorable arrangements for poor areas. To give you an example, the transport departments arrange construction of highways and railways every year, and the central government can demand they prioritize construction for roads leading to poor areas. In this way, poverty-stricken areas can first enjoy better resources. Thirdly, in my view, China's special systems can enable the rapid application of best practices in certain areas across the nation. As far as I can recall, we've had many such examples since 1986, when we initiated some small-scale pilot programs in poverty alleviation and witnessed effective results. Our government was able to make use of its influence and quickly promote the practice nationwide so as to make all areas in China benefit from the innovative tests and measures in 
in order to carry out an effective poverty alleviation program, it is, um, it is the responsibility to work at the very local levels. I was there, I was there literally yesterday, the day before, in local villages that are, that are very poor, and you see officials working with the, the villages one by one. Uh, how do you motivate the uh, officials, uh, maybe from a county level or, or provincial level, to go down to the poorest level uh, to work with individuals? Uh, what, is, what does it take to, uh, you know, elevate their spirit or to focus their spirits uh, that this is an important task? Over the years of learning lessons from others, say, by referring to the experiences of the development programs in China designed by the World Bank, we have already developed measures to monitor, examine, and evaluate the work of staff working in poor villages. It includes several aspects. First, at the country and township level, we set up systems of support for poverty alleviation management departments. To give you an example, the cadres will keep records of their daily work in the village, such as what activities they have performed, etc., and then report to the township and county. Second, superior officials will inspect the villages from time to time and ask the aid recipients to learn about the performance of the cadres working in the village. The questions go like this. Is he visiting the poor households every day and what problems is he working on? Well, such a conversation is also carried out with village cadres. Third, the recipient satisfaction is a very important indicator in China's poverty alleviation. That is to say, if the poor are not satisfied with the cadres assigned there to help, they cannot be lifted out of poverty because their problems cannot be effectively solved. Therefore, with multiple sources of information, we can evaluate the performance of our cadres and staff in an objective and reliable manner. We aim to motivate the internal growth impetus in the poor themselves. We try to transform their mindset with multifaceted support, improve their labor skills, and build up their sources of income. We do not apply a one size fits all solution. It's the poor themselves that decide on what industry to develop, while the main responsibility of government is to provide support for them. Poverty alleviation in the end relies on economic development, industrial development, and most importantly, diligent work by the poor themselves. President Xi Jinping has made targeted poverty alleviation an emblem of his leadership. He said, we should mobilize the energies of our whole party, our whole country, and our whole society and continue to implement targeted poverty reduction and alleviation measures. The success of China's targeted poverty alleviation campaign, bringing 10 to 14 million people per year out of poverty, depends on strict, standardized, quantitative, and transparent procedures all across China. Five levels of party secretaries must each do their parts, provincial, municipal, county, township, and village. Five methods of poverty alleviation are used. Industry, creating a sustainable micro-business. Relocating, moving people from remote areas. Education and training. Ecological compensation for those living in ecologically vulnerable areas. And social security, medical subsidies, and direct payments to those who cannot work. China set six precisions. Targeted measures are implemented in terms of funding projects and recipients. Every impoverished household is guaranteed help. Every village has designated officials to carry out poverty eradication measures. And goals are met within the defined standards. As much as I thought I knew China, I was startled to see that every poor family in China has its own file each with its customized plan, checked monthly, recorded on paper, and digitized for central analysis. Millions of households. Equally startling, local officials are dispatched to impoverished villages to manage poverty alleviation for two years. I watched a democratic evaluation in a remote village where villagers voted into poverty status one young man whose father has cancer and cheered when another man was raised out of poverty. That moment for me was closer to China.